Okay, shalom, shalom. Kwam ya shalom. Kuholoyim la. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kahakodash. Double honors to our apostles and elders, the great millstone, who rule well, and led by the Spirit, taught us this beautiful truth, and just want to say the water to all the Akim and Akwath. That's out here sincerely keeping the laws, the statutes, and commandments of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, to the best of their ability. This is Yahweh, I'm just coming at you with another quick lesson. Praying that it's edifying by the Spirit. And wanted to touch on, um, you know, something that just hit me in the spirit with Abraham. Because you have these Christians that's, you know, they say, well, if you come from Abraham, you know, they all have, a, a, you know, patches way to salvation and all this other stuff. But what a lot of Christians don't know is all nations didn't come from Abraham. So what about those nations? And then when you bring that up, they're looking at you like, uh, uh, because uh, they don't really know that. They just, you know, they, they see... A couple of scriptures mentioning Abraham and they don't understand the real context of it. And then they just run with the Lord wants the whole world to be saved. And that's just not scriptural, man. You know, we have to break down those stumbling blocks. So what I did was, I, um, you know, I was in here and, you know, I just asked, uh, you know, of course, AI. Did all nations descend from Abraham? And then I asked what nations were pretty much on the planet before Abraham, so to speak. And they gave two different answers. Because if you just ask AI or if you ask Google, um, did all nations come from Abraham? It's just going to give you this Christianity mindset that, yes, everybody came from Abraham. And that's just not true. So let's, let's give it a try. See? Now it says, yes, according to the Bible. They have Genesis 7 and 15 right here. I mean, so like you, Genesis 17 and 5. It says, God changes Abraham's name to, from Abram to Abraham, explaining that he will be the father of many nations. Okay, it says many nations. It don't say all nations. Because you have to realize that before Abraham was born, there were nations here. <laughs> so what about those nations that weren't born from Abraham? So when you get to asking um, um, these Christians certain questions, you know, they're going to nosedive. They're going to squirm, wiggle, you know, and, and, and pretty much make up their own shit like they normally usually do. Right. OK, it goes on to say biblical account. God caused Abraham to leave his home in Ur, Mesopotamia, and travel to Canaan, where he will establish a new nation. God promises that Abraham's descendants will inherit the land and become a great nation. Jewish framework. Abraham is considered the father of the people of Israel. Okay, so of course we know that. But Abraham also had other sons. We know that. Or a lot of Christians don't know that. So let me let me correct that. Let's so now let's let's put let's see how many sons did he have. Let's see here. Yeah, let me just must have locked you. Here you go right here, right? According to the book of Genesis, Abraham had eight sons, right? So now we know that he had eight sons. All of them didn't come from his wife, though, right? He had, you know, some concubines. He had some, you know, some little side pieces, basically. But the, the, the promise went to Isaac. And that's clear in the scriptures. So let's, let's ask um, AI about that. According to CDPCKL, Isaac truly is the new Abraham. The covenant has been preserved for another generation. The garden is growing, expanding, and so is the promise that through Isaac's offspring all nations on earth will be blessed. Okay, so see, that's what they have for that, but that blessing goes to Isaac. Why not the other sons? Matter of fact, Ishmael is actually older than Isaac, which, you know, by law, so to speak, but see, he came from a slave woman which is Hagar so why wasn't the blessing given to Ishmael which was the oldest son like how inheritances normally go so let's ask AI that
See, it says in, in the Bible, Isaac became Abraham's sole heir instead of Ishmael because Sarah, Abraham's wife, wanted to prevent Ishmael from sharing Isaac's inheritance. OK, so let's see what else it says, because they're trying to make it seem like it was just Sarah's fault. It says Sarah was concerned that Ishmael's mother, Hagar, was was Egyptian and not one of us. And she wasn't. It, it, it had nothing to do with her. Ishmael's behavior at, at a feast to celebrate Isaac's birth. Ishmael mocked Isaac, which angered Sarah. I thought it was um Hagar that, that mocked her. It says God promised, God's promise. God promised that Abraham's descendants would inherit the land and become a nation through Isaac. However, God also promised that Ishmael descendants would raise up a great nation of their own. Okay, so we know that, of course, yet yeah, yeah, they were blessed. But they wasn't blessed with the promise because what did Abraham do? He sent them on their way. You get the account of, of, of Sarah telling him, hey, look, get rid of the bond woman. She's not going to share her, her and her son. Her son is not going to share in the inheritance with Isaac when you go into the story. And Isaac, you know, sent them away like how she asked. The Lord actually told her, told um, Isaac. Yeah, do it. Do what Sarah says, man. Send him, send him away because this is going to be for this promise is going to go um, um, to Isaac. And then from Isaac, it goes to Jacob. But again, like I said, again, now, when you ask AI, did all nations, you know, descend from Abraham? They give you this, you know, um, matter of fact, let's do it again. See, now here you go. Abraham, now I, I kind of asked it differently this time. According to the Bible, Abraham is the ancestor of many neighbors, um, nations, including the Israelites, the Ishmaelites, the Edomites, the Amalekites, the Kenizzites, Medianites, and the Assyrians. So all those nations, you know, those, those came from um, Isaac, but they weren't a part, part of the promise. And you don't ever hear about any of these other sons. It's just that when Christians, they, they get into their mode of trying to make it seem as if everybody can be saved, they use Abraham's name. But the scripture clearly says that, um, you know, uh, uh, that this blessing was going to Isaac and then from Isaac to Jacob. It didn't have anything to do with these other nations, man. Right. So I'm just trying to prove here that when Christians give you this song and dance about all nations coming from Abraham, and that they're going to be saved, that's just not true. And normally they will have these scriptures in here. But let's go to um let's go to the New Testament. Let's go to Romans chapter 9. Let's start from the very top here. Verse 1. I say the truth in Yahweh Shai, I lie not. My conscience also bearing me witness with the Holy Spirit. That I have great heaviness and con continual sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were cursed from Yahweh Shah Mashiach for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Now, who is Paul talking about here? According to the flesh, he's talking about his blood people, man. Verse four: Who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law? And the service of God and the promises. You won't find nowhere in the scriptures where the Lord gave that to any other nation. Those things that were just named off were given to the Israelites and to the Israelites only. So now it goes on to say, and this is where you know Christians, they get it confused. Let's read on. Verse 5. Whose are the fathers and of whom as concerning the flesh, Yahweh Mashiach came, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. Not as though the word of God had taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Now let's read that in the NLT, verse 6 in the NLT, Romans 9 and 6. Well then, has God failed to fulfill his promise to Israel? No, for not all who are born into the nation of Israel are truly members of Yahweh's people. Because you got some damn reprobates. You got some, some they're Israelites. But are they a part of the elect? No, they're not. So if all the Israelites are not a part of the elect, what makes you think that the Lord is going to be dealing with these heathen nations? 
that all of a sudden, all of a sudden, they can be saved. All of a sudden, the Lord has forgotten about the promise that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as if the Lord's a liar. And he's all of a sudden giving it to these heathen. See, you have to read the scriptures with proper context, man. Verse 7, it says, Neither because, they, see, this is the point right here. This is where they, they go off at. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. See? But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. They don't go back and think like, well, Abraham had eight sons, but why did the Lord only choose Isaac? Or they don't go back even further than Abraham were like, okay, well, there was people before Abraham. How could he be the father of all nations? No, it says that he was the father of many nations, not all nations. There were nations on the planet before um, um, Abraham. Like take, for instance, um, Lot. Lot, which was Abraham's nephew. Lot was with Abraham the whole way, pretty much, until, you know, they, you know, they gathered all the riches. You know, they both had a lot of cattle. And, you know, if you go through the story, their herdsmen were fighting, you know, because of, you know, they had so much cattle between them, you know, and they was trying to feed and graze, you know, let them graze on the land. And, you know, they needed water for all these animals. And then, you know, Abraham pretty much told Lot, hey, look, we're people, man. You know, we're, we're family. Hey, choose any part of the land that you want. Whatever part you choose. You go that way and I'll go the opposite. And that's when Lot chose Sodom and Gomorrah or that area of Sodom and Gomorrah because it says that it was rich in, you know, grazing land, roughly paraphrasing. It was, you know, um, they had plenty of water, things of that nature. But the point that I want to make is, OK, Abraham, um, um, Lot was Abraham's nephew. But Lot went on to have his own children. Which he had two daughters, right? So Lot didn't come from Abraham. See, Lot was Abraham's nephew. Now, and, and, and to go even further, when Sodom and Gomorrah went down, and if you're familiar with the story, Lot's two daughters slept with him. And out of the two daughters sleeping with their father, which was incest, came the Moabites and the Ammonites. So what about the, the Moabites and the Ammonites? They don't come from Abraham. So what, what I'm trying to point out is when Christians use that that sense of everybody come out of Abraham and they are the children of God. No, man, that's not true, man. You have to go into the specifics of it with, with, with these um, these Christians, man. And, and they'll swallow themselves on up, man, because they don't be knowing the scriptures like that. And that's why it's important to um, read and to also pray, you know what I'm saying, for understanding. Because, you know, hey, this is not something that I'm thinking. This is just something that was brought up in my spirit. Like, well, what about... You know, um, Moab and, Am and Ammon, those children that came from um, Abraham's um, nephew, Lot. Lot didn't even come from Abraham. Those children that, that, that his daughters had with him, they didn't come from Abraham. So what about those nations? So you have to ask Christians, what about them? And, and, and they'll lose it, man, because they, they only focus on a few scriptures that they don't really understand. They don't understand the, the couple of scriptures that they pull. I always say it. It's three words that's in the Bible that, that Christians lose it when they hear them. When they hear the word world, they figure it's the whole planet. And it's not that. A lot of the times when it talks about the word world, it's just going off into an age or a society. Because we're living in the age of Esau right now. That's, this is his world. He's running shit. Then they, they might see the word all, A-L-L, -L, and they lose their mind. Oh, well, it said all people. They're not looking at the context of what the scripture is saying. It's not talking. Who you think? You think Yahweh was speaking to everybody when, on, 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 on everything that he said? He was only speaking to the, the men that were, that were around him when he said all or whomsoever. Or, you know, these days they would say whosoever. That's another word. They just lose it. Well, whosoever shall believe. OK, well, who was he talking to when he said that? And then they just lose their mind. And because, and, and, see, actually. They don't think spiritually. They can't fathom in their mind that the Lord created all nations and only chose one. That's what their per real problem is. It's almost like they, they look at it as if, say, say like, for instance, you got an um, a elementary school. And you got this smorgasbord of a kingdom of Esau. And you got Chinese people living there, Japanese people, South Koreans, North Koreans, you know, um, black people. Filipinos, whatever the case may be, all these different um, uh, people. And they're sending all their kids to the elementary school. They're expecting that 
because my children are here, they should all be treated equally. Okay, that may be the case in Esau's kingdom when it comes to something like that. But that's not the case when it comes to the Lord. The Lord chose a, a nation of people. He only gave the old covenant to the children of Israel. He only gave the new covenant to the children of Israel. Salvation is of the Jews. It's only for the children of Israel. The Lord even said that. He said that he was not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But because these people can't fathom, well, why? Why would he create all these nations and only choose one? Well, because he can. You know, people get up, man, and choose what they're going to eat for breakfast. They choose the outfit they're going to wear. Hell, some people even have the, the option to choose in which car they're going to drive. Shit, I'm going to take the Benz today. I'm going to take the Beamer today. Or I'm going to take the, fuck it, I'm going to jump in the Wagoneer. Or I'm going to jump into the, you know, the, the Benz truck. People got choices. They, they, they got all these damn choices that they can make. But when it comes to the Lord, which, you know, they, they just like, well, no, the Lord can't have any choices. He made us all. Yeah, he made, he did. But now there's also scriptures that talks about how the Lord, he has a favorite, um, I'm trying to think where it's actually worded. Uh, Salakia, bear with me real quick. Let me see if I can find it. Because the Lord, he has favorites, man. He chose the children of Israel out of all the nations, man. That was his favorite nation that he wanted to choose. There's nothing you can do about it. You didn't create shit, you know? Okay, here we go right here. Second Ezra chapter 5. Let me start at verse 23. And said, O Lord, that bearest rule over every wood of the earth, and all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee one only vine. One only vine. So the Lord chose a, a, a vine, man. Right? Which generally is going into the grapes. And all and of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. And of all the flowers thereof, one lily. So the Lord, hey, he 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 chose the lily as his favorite 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 flower. Out of all the flowers, can the roses be mad? See? Can the sunflowers be mad? You know, can all these different flowers say, well, why did you choose me? He chose, he can choose just like you can choose. Right? It says, and of all the depths of the sea, thou hast filled thee one river. And of all builded cities, thou hast hollowed Zion unto thyself. So out of all the cities, can, you know, can, can all the other cities get mad because he chose Zion? Come on, bro. The Lord can choose as well. And he chose a nation, which are the children of Israel. It says, and of all the fowls that are created, thou have named thee one dove. So the Lord loves the dove, man. Can the blue jay get mad? Can the cardinal get mad? Can the crow get mad? You know, can the, you know, can any of these other birds get mad? And of all the cattle that are made, thou hast provided thee one sheep. Right? So the Lord loves the sheep, man. See? Can, the, can, can, can any of the animals get mad? So the, what I want to say or prove here is, is that the Lord can choose. And he chose the children of Israel. The children of Israel are his portion, man. Verse 27. And among all the multitudes of people, thou hast gotten thee one people. Uh-oh. And unto this people whom thou lovest, thou gavest a law that is approved of all. See that? Uh-oh. So the Lord chose a nation. Who is that nation? The children of Israel. Verse 28. And now, O Lord, why hast thou given this one people over unto many? So the children of Israel, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, were given over to you damn heathen. And you've been ruling over us for the past 500 years here. Now, all of a sudden, the Lord, he's like, all right, well, your punishment is up. I'm going to bring you back to me. All you damn nations want to get a part in that. You all want to, you all want to get, you, 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 you fucked us up. But now, all of a sudden, after fucking us up, you want a part of what the Lord has blessed us with. It don't work that way, man. Verse 28 again. And now, O Lord, why hast thou given this one people over unto many and upon the one root? Hast thou prepared others? And why hast thou scattered thy only one people among many? See? And they which did gainsay thy promises and believe not thy covenants have trodden them down. You, you, you damn heathen don't believe in the Lord. That's why um that Psalms 50 and um what's that 16? Let's get that real quick. See, this is not for you nations, man. When you go in precept upon precept, you'll see that this is not for you. 
They don't. Re you don't respect the the the, the Lord's um, word, man. Psalms 50 and 16. But unto the wicked, Yahweh said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? See, what did it just say about the covenants? Y'all don't believe in the covenants? Y'all don't believe in the real words of Yahweh about Shimei Awashai? Here you go, you got a heathenous ass nation. Y'all out here running shit. Okay, yeah, let's get verse 17. It says, Seeing thou hatest instruction and castest my words behind thee. See, Esau hate instruction. He cast the words of the Lord behind him. Now, what did he do? He got his hands on the Bible. He whitewashed all the images. That's in the scriptures as well. See? So now, all these prophetic things are starting to come to pass and people are starting to see it. And now you got this big ass fuss. It, it almost goes off into like um, when, uh, what was that, um, Edris? Or was it Nehemiah? I think it was Edris. When when the, the children of Israel were starting to build the the, um, the temple back up, and you had these damn heathen that were talking about, you know, they wanted to build with us. And the, and the prophets, our forefathers, told them, no, no, you're not building nothing with us, man. <laughs> this has nothing to do with you, roughly paraphrasing. Basically, so you have these other nations. Now, they want to get in on it. Oh, we want to help you. We're all one people. We all love you. But y'all the motherfuckers that's been fucking us up for the past half millennial. So this this truth is not for everyone, man. That's the point that I wanted to really make out. Because, again, these people, they'll see something like Abraham's seed. They'll see that word, Abraham's seed, right? And they lose their damn mind. But all nations, all you see, to cut these Christians with that is to ask them, well, did all nations really come from Abraham? And tell them to Google it. Tell them to ask Siri or some shit. Tell them to ask Alexa. You see? And AI going to give them the business and let them know, hey, no, all nations did not. Matter of fact, if you go before Abraham, it goes, they're going to tell you about the Tower of um, Babel and um, Nimrod. So did Abraham create all those people? I mean, did all those people come from the, the loins of Abraham? Of course not. So this is something that we can use to actually cut these these Christians that be talking that shit about how the Lord loves everybody all of a sudden. Let's get this right here. Second Edra 6 and 54. More proof, man. And, and, and it's so many scriptures, man. It, it's too many scriptures that goes off into this is for the children of Israel and the children of Israel only, man. Second Edra 6 and 54. It says, after these, and after these, Adam also, whom thou madest Lord of all thy creatures, of him come come we all. And the people also, and the people also whom thou hast chosen. See that? There, there's a, a, a distinction there. See, it says all people came from Adam, but there is a people that's actually chosen, right? Verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord, because thou madest the world for our sakes. And as for the uh, as for the other people, which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, <laughs> but be like unto spittle, and has likened the abundance of them unto the, a drop that falleth from a vessel. So the Lord is saying these other nations are nothing. And now, O Lord, and pretty much this is going off in what it just said in um, chapter five we were just saying. And now, O Lord, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have become have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long would this endure? So this is something that Edris is asking. If we're also goddamn equal, why is it that the so-called white man is running everything? See, why, why is he, why is he over the children of Israel? Why, why is he over us? You know what I'm saying? Why is he, you know, um, directing our every goddamn step every day? Why do we have to go by his laws? Why do we have to, um, you know, go by his, his school curriculum and shit? Why do we need a passport from him to, to travel? Why do we need his driver's license to travel? You know, what, what, what why do we need these things? How is it that this man can come and kick in our door and take our children away from us if he feels as if we're not um, raising them the way that he wants us, us to raise them? If we're so in control, if we're so goddamn equal with everybody. 
These other nations, ha they have their, their lot. They have their lands. They have their places. We're the only ones that's sub subject to listening to another nation of people. That's <laughs> Come on, bro. You can't get around that. And also, let's get this. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. To these Christians that believe that we're all together and the Lord can't choose who he wants to choose. Deuteronomy 7 and 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Yahweh thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. This is not changed. If the Lord loved everybody, he would have sent Moses and Aaron right off into um, Egypt and told Pharaoh, hey, look, the Lord want all of us to get together. Why did he send all those plagues upon Pharaoh? Why did he kill the firstborn of, the, uh, uh, of, of Pharaoh and the, um, uh, uh, the firstborn of the Egyptians? Why did he do that? See? What the hell going on here? Salakia. Let me see. Is that, um, let's get Deuteronomy 14 and 2. There's plenty of scriptures, man. And you know, you got these, oh, but well, that was the Old Testament. Nothing has changed, man. The new covenant and the old covenant is for the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 14 and 2. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. You cannot get around that, bro. A peculiar people. That's a special people to the Lord, man. Let's see here. Something else I wanted to get. Uh, it's just a chapter. To... Mm. Yeah, this is it right here. Um. Not what I want though, right off. Uh... Yep, bear with me real quick. Let's go into the uh, blue letter real quick. I think how this bad boy is burning. Put it in like this. I was in the right chapter. It was Deuteronomy 32 and 8, Salakia. It says, when the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. See? The children of Israel are the inheritance, man. He, this is who he chose. You can't get around it, man. You can't make him, you know. Verse 9, it says, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. See? <laughs> you cannot get around that, man. There's too many scriptures on that, man. But like I said, again, let me see. Let's go back to uh, Romans. And I, I don't know how to get all this mixed up. I, they just don't read. They don't want to get it. Because you can't get around this. Well, Romans um, chapter 9 again. Let's start back at verse 6. Not as though the word of God have taken none effect. For they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. You can't get around that bro. That is they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God. You, how can you get around that? But the children of the promise are accounted for the seed. So the children of the flesh is going off into uh, uh, these other nations, man. Hagar. Because again, Ishmael, he was the oldest son. Why didn't he get the inheritance? Because he was a child of the flesh, man. Verse 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. See? And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, 
even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of Yahweh, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. So this goes by what the Lord chose. He chose Israel. He didn't choose Esau. He goes on to say, it, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. Now, is that fair? <laughs> the Lord can do what he want, man. It says, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid, which means no. The Lord, he can choose what he wants to choose. He created all things. So who are you to say that? Oh, well, he just chose one people. How dare him? No, you can't say shit. You're going to fall in line because you don't have no choice. Verse 15, it says, for he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of Yahweh that showeth mercy. In the NLT, that verse says, so it is God who decides to show it is God who decides to show mercy. We can neither choose it nor work for it. For the scriptures say that God told Pharaoh, I had I have appointed you for a very purpose, for the very purpose of displaying my power in you and to spread my fame throughout the earth. That's the only reason why he chose Pharaoh. For no other reason. Verse 18. So you see, God chooses to show mercy to some and he chooses to harden the hearts of others. So they refuse to listen. Can't get around that, man. Can't get around that. And these Christians, they hate um, Romans um, um, chapter nine. Because it cuts all that bullshit that they be talking about. And you really have to go up into the scriptures, man, and really read into it the proper way. But they see words like world, all, and, and what was the other one? Whosoever or whomsoever. And they lose their mind, man. They, you know, they, they just really think that the Lord can't choose someone. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. So, you know, again, you know, it, it kind of all started from me, you know, asking the AI, you know, did Abraham... Was he the father of all nations? And you can clearly see right here, according to the Bible, Abraham is the ancestor of many nations. It doesn't say all nations, including the Israelites. He's the father of the Ishmaelites. He's the father of the Edomites and the Amalekites. And the Amalekites, those are those are descendants of the Edomites as well. So I don't even know why they even have them really separated like that. The um, Kenizzites, the Medianites, and the Assyrians. See, it says here's some more information about Abraham. Abraham, mean, Abraham name means father of many nations. Uh, Abraham was from Ur in Mes Mesopotamia, which is now Iraq. See that? Abraham's son Isaac was the patriarch of the Israelites, and his son Ishmael was the patriarch of the Arabs. Journey. God called Abraham to leave his home and, and to travel to Canaan, which today, you know, you know, they call Africa pretty much in a sense there um, um, of uh, the Hamites, basically, which he promised to his children. Descendants, the descendants of Abraham at the beginning of the Israelite nation were a mix of Canaanite, Egyptian and Western Mesopotamia elements. They looked similar to the Semitic people of the Middle East today, which there is no such thing as no damn Semitic. It's Shem. Shemitic, like modern Israelis and Arabs. So see, they you know they throw that twist in there. They try and get all, you know, all, all sneaky and shit. They know full well that the children of Israel were dark melanated people, man. And they give you talking about some Semitic. Ain't no damn Semitic. It's not Sem. It's Shem. And there's no such thing as a Middle East. That's not biblical, man. That Middle East shit is a new, a fairly new made up term. See, here you go right here. And it's crazy. Look right here. Now, right here, check this out. Let me let me highlight this. To show you how they get now. It's saying sim medic, right? Sim. But now look right here. Why does this say shim? Right underneath it. Ancestry. Abraham was a descendant of Noah through his son Shem. So why is this saying sim? Why do they say anti-Semitic instead of anti-Shemitic? Because these people are sneaky rat bastards, man. 
and they try and keep the truth. See, they don't expect people to ask questions like this. They don't expect expect people to Google um, um, a question like this. And then also we can clearly see that it's a certain way that you have to word things for you to actually get the information that you're looking for because Esau is just that goddamn slick. Because I had to put this in a couple of times. At first I put in, it's Abraham, the um, the father of all nations, right? And then it gave us the information as far as he's the he's the father of many nations. You know, they didn't give that full answer. So when I put in, well, okay, did any other nations exist before Abraham? So that was reworded. I had to reword it. And, and ask the question within that way. And then they actually gave the information that I actually really was looking for and really wanted. Because we know that um, um, Abraham is not the father of all nations, but the average Christian don't know that. So I just wanted to just point that out, man. I didn't want to keep the lesson long. Something that, I, you know, hit me in the spirit and I was meditating on it and just wanted to do something to it. So I pray that, you know, nothing was confusing to you guys or, um, you know, that you was that it was edifying to you. And that, you know, you, you have some tools or some weapons, you know, part of your weapons is this word, this sword to um, actually, uh, you know, defend the gospel with, so to speak. So with that, I pray that the lesson was edifying. Kwame Asha'Allah and the Bible Ball.